him in the professor's employ. <sighs> now, if you excuse me, I'm an old man. My muscles ache. I require rest. What a tool. He's right, though. I better get some rest. Big day tomorrow. Well, someone's got to clean up this mess. Not it. Not it. Not it. Not it. What? Oh, bogus. See you in the morning. <laughs> to talk. All right. Here's the southern tip of the bog where the professor wants us to start. He's been excavating there for years and he's found nothing. And he won't. Veneman's theories are correct, but his location's wrong. Explain. Well, last night, I am... Um, I was reviewing the uh, geological records for this area. And sometime around 1700, um, there was a, a major earthquake in this region. This entire ridge here was thrust up from underground. Right under the bog. I know where the bog used to be. A, a bit of it shifted south, and that's where Fenneman's been digging. But most of it shifted east, right here. Where is that exactly? OK. Um, here's the path that we took in. Right here, where the path curves up, it's uh, about a hundred yards from there. Uh, we walk right by it. Mm, no, that's almost a mile away. Which is why Fenneman discounted it. But, I mean, why would the residents of this castle go so far out of their way to get rid of their bodies when there's a perfectly good bog right here? Because in 800 AD, the bog wasn't right here. Exactly. Brilliant. I say we stick to the southern tip where the professor indicates. Yeah, screw that. I got my money on Steve-O. Then let's get going. Someone's got to clean up all this crap. Uh, not it. Oh, come on, Ron. No, not it. It's at 7 o'clock in the morning. All right. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a bogman by his toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Yeah. Right where it should be. Bang up job, Steve-O. All right, people. As my Uncle Sal used to say, let's dig some holes. This, not to be too crude about it, sucks the royal schwa. I think Steve needs to check his math. Back to work, Ron. I disagree. I think back to work is not the proper course of action at this moment. A nap, perhaps, but more of this futile, useless probing of stinking muck? I don't think so. It sounded like metal. Folks, we may have some. I owe the IRS $10,000 in back taxes, and now I'm being threatened with wage garnishment. The state says that I owe them back taxes, and now they're going to seize my property. At the offices of Tax Alliance, we hear stories like these all the time.
Back off, dude. Mine. My God. What? Berserkers. The emblem of the Berserkers. No way. That emblem wasn't as crazy as we thought. Um, people, someone's wearing this helmet. Everybody, meet the bog people. This is amazing. That's a Viking. A goddamn Viking. We're made. Our careers are made. All our transgressions shall be forgiven. Wait, there's more here. There are? Where? Smaller than the Viking. It's a woman. How can it be so sure? I feel sorry for you, Ron. Being so out of touch with your feelings. I believe you, Susie. Come on, let's finish the job. She was so young. What are you feeling, Susie? I, I, Professor, over and out. He wants the body brought out as soon as possible. And how does he suggest we accomplish this task? You carry them. To where? To where the vehicles are parked. <laughs> That'll take all day. It's as close as Professor Fenneman can get. Unless you'd like to abandon the expedition and have a petting party instead. Okay, then. Tomorrow morning, Nick, Steve, Susie, and I carry the bodies out to the SUV. And what part do I play in all this? You stay here with Max and keep digging. That's wonderful. Just me and the bog people. Back hurts. I'm dying over here. Tell me about it. Sorry. I wonder how Ron's making out. I don't feel good about leaving him back there alone. He's not alone. He's got Max to pal around with. I wouldn't want to be left alone with that creepy old bastard. He'll be fine. Come on, let's go. Look at this bounty. Oh, yes. Such beauty, even in death. Oh, I'm so happy. This is vindication. Yeah. Congratulations on that. Yes, yes. Uh, come and get this other one in. Diana, thank you. You don't know what this means to him. You really care about him, don't you? Mom and Dad died in a plane crash when I was five. Lawrence was just starting college. He gave up a full scholarship at Yale to come home and take care of me. I know I was a burden. I know I prevented him from pursuing things he wanted to. 
to watch him these past 10 years, exiled, ridiculed, and tortured. But now look at him. And I owe it all to you guys. Nothing, nothing. Goddamn lousy stinking bug. How's it going, Ron? Where the hell have you guys been? Find anything? Nada. Squat. Net nil zero Z. Where's Max? <sighs> Sleeping it off somewhere. Nothing, huh? Let's look somewhere else. Let's try. Quarter mile southwest. my handiwork. I've never seen that bog person before in my life. You sure you didn't discover this little section on your own while we were gone and maybe you just weren't going to tell anybody about it? Would I do that? <laughs> okay, yeah, I would. But I didn't. I swear. Guys, I think he's telling the truth. Why? If you're living with diabetes and using insulin, you know the pain of pricking your fingers over and over again.
name's Diana. What's your name? <gasps> Can you tell me your name? Why don't you come out? Can you come out? Why don't you come on out? You're all right. Nobody's gonna hurt you here. I swear, you're safe. <gasps> We have to get her back to civilization. All right, you and Nick take her back in the morning. The rest of us are gonna stay here and finish the excavation. Ron, you don't get it, do you? Expedition's on hold, bro. Pardon? Someone attacked that girl. You don't know if that someone is still out there. We're all going back until the police can clear this up. Well, that's it then. We're officially hosed. I mean, once word of our discovery gets out, every big swinging dick archaeologist in the world is gonna descend upon our fair bog like a pack of famished jackals. That girl was nearly killed. I'm scared. You're always scared. Watch your mouth, Ron. Listen, Ron, this is our discovery, and I'll fight to protect it. But we can't stay out here in the woods with a madman on the loose. I have an interesting question. Yeah. Where's Max? <laughs> okay, listen up. I'm gonna go get our new guest. Everyone else, grab your stuff. What in the hell for? I think we should all stay in the mess tent tonight. Good idea. Let me try a little breakfast. Yeah, I'm good. Good. Mm. Mm. What? Whoa, she, she spoke. Hey, my name's Diana. What's your name? Tara, we're going home today. Do you want to go home? No sign of Max. This ain't right. Hey, who's got the, the map and GPS? Okay. Things are becoming clearer. First Max disappears, then this girl's camp gets trashed, and now the map and GPS are gone? Does anyone want to put two and two together here? We have no evidence Max took anything. Or attacked that camp. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. I'm gonna get on the horn and see if the professor knows where Max is. He's gone. He's gone. Oh. Where's the radio? What's wrong? <laughs> See anything? Split up. Groups of two. Well, if you find anything, yell. <laughs> you don't gotta tell me that. Hey, Susie, we... Susie? Susie, come on, let's get out. 
Susie? Susie! 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 She's gone. Susie's gone. What do you mean she's gone? I, I don't know. I, I left her alone for a second and she, she just disappeared. Susie! Calm down. She probably just got spooked and went back to the castle. Yeah, chill out, okay. all right? Hey, you, you're probably right. We're, we're, we're all on edge here. She, she probably just went back to the castle. So let's go find her. If you're living with diabetes and using insulin, you know... Where's Susie? What, she didn't come back? I've been sitting here for the last 16 minutes. You're the first person to come through. Come on, we gotta go find her. Susie! Nothing? It's all my fault. It's all my fault. We went by Terry's camp. I mean, Susie wasn't there, but we found some of her stuff. We found something else at her camp, too. Max's flask. You might have been right about him, Ron. He got Susie. I never should have left her alone. Steve, calm down. We'll go back out at daybreak. If she's out there, we'll find her. Go out? <laughs> Nonsense. We are going back tomorrow. I'm not leaving Susie. Steve, listen to me. I was pretty fond of our little Susie as well, but the four of us tramping unarmed through the wilderness is not going to help her. We need to go get the authorities. Ron's right. Tomorrow morning, we should get out of here as fast as possible and get the police. I'm not leaving. I know. So tomorrow, Nick and Ron, take Tara out and get the cops. Steve and I stay behind and keep searching. No, I'll stay. No, I need you to get Tara out of here. I'm staying. You'll do that? Yeah, I will. But I think tonight we should all stay inside the castle. Yeah. No kidding. Hey, Tara. Hi, Diana. How are you doing? Do you need anything? I feel so dirty. I'll go down and get you some water. Don't worry, we'll fix you up, okay?
Jesus, him. Nick, you scared the crap out of me. Sorry, I thought I heard something. Yeah, here. so did I. Come on, let's get inside. Nick! Ron! Steve! Hey! I heard something! Get up here! Quick! What's up? I heard something. Outside. I don't see anything. I swear I heard something. It's probably an animal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm just on the wrong edge. I owe the IRS $10,000 in back taxes, and now I'm being threatened with wage garnishment. The state says that I owe them back taxes, and now they're going to seize my property. At the offices of Tax Alliance, we hear stories like these all the time. Of people just like you who are burdened with tax debt they just can't get away from. At Tax Alliance, we're not here to judge you. We're here to help you get a fresh start. Call Tax Alliance, your tax resolution solution, right now for a no-obligation consultation. If you're living with diabetes and using insulin, you know the pain of pricking your fingers over and over again. Ouch! Well, by wearing a small device called a Continuous Glucose Monitor, or CGM, you can reduce the pain of pricking your fingers. Here's what actual U.S. Med customers had to say. We were paying out of pocket for other supplies. Now Medicare is paying. What a big help. U.S. Med is great. Make this free call to U.S. Med so you can learn how to get your own Continuous Glucose Monitor. 
Imagine having fuller, thicker, more voluminous hair instantly. All it takes is just one session at Hair Club. Introducing X-Strands. X-Strands adds hundreds or even thousands of hair strands to your existing hair at the root. They're personalized to match your own natural hair color and texture, so they'll blend right in for a natural, effortless look. Call in the next five minutes, and when you buy 500 strands, you get 500 strands free. Call right now. Now I'm known as the guy who can fix just about anything, but the technology in most appliances requires very special training to fix. And that's why my family has Choice Home Warranty. Choice Home Warranty covers over 25 major home systems and appliances. That's your AC, heating, plumbing, kitchen and laundry appliances, and so much more. Call Choice Home Warranty now before something breaks down. Get protection for your heating, AC, plumbing, kitchen and laundry appliances, and more. 800-970-3151. in the woods. Uh, there's lots of branches in the woods. Branches can snap for a variety of reasons. Getting spooked. Shh. You're doing it to yourself. Right, no panic on the bridge of the Enterprise. Right? actually happen. Oh my god, this is incredible. This is... This is the discovery of the decade. Uh, of the century of the goddamn millennium. Oh, I found you. Me. I'm gonna be famous. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna be bigger than Leaky. I'm bigger than Gould, even. No, no, wait, wait, where are you going? No, no, don't go, I have to show you to someone. I won't hurt you. I come in peace. Please, stay. Ah! <laughs> Susie, those are the things that got Susie. See, it's okay. You're gonna be okay. Then no, now I know she's dead. Okay, Steve, listen. Listen to me very carefully. Susie is gone. Now we all loved her, but she's gone, and we have to accept that. Now we're in some serious trouble here, and if we don't stay calm and figure a way out of this, we're all gonna be dead. Is you getting killed gonna bring Susie back? 
No. I just had a bad thought. And what's that? If our bog bodies are up and boogieing around out there, what about the two we sent back to Fenham? This better be good, Fenneman. Believe me, Dr. Hastrick, it is. I don't do archaeological postmortems at the drop of a hat, you know. I needed the best man for the job. Well, you've got them. What is this child doing here? This is my sister, and I doubt you could find a better assistant anywhere. Is this some kind of joke, Fenneman? All the hush-hush, and now Britney Spears is here to assist me? Allow me to say good night. Oh my God. Is that? It's a bog body from Balborg Castle. Balborg Castle? Are you sure? We're sure. Carbon dating indicates this fellow lived around 800 A.D. A.D.? Do you know what this means? I believe we do. Where do I suit up? Subject is a male, age undetermined, but a fully formed adult. Height is well over six foot. Weight would be estimated at the time of death to be 100 kilos. Scalpel. Did anyone feel that? What? It feels cold all of a sudden. Nerves, young lady, nerves. Now, are you going to hand me that scalpel, or do I have to beg for it? Beginning lateral incision. Sis, we're holding on to it. In Denmark, of all places. You know the interesting thing about the bog people, sis? Their flesh is highly acidic from the peat. That's why they don't decompose. Lawrence, get out of here! I remember way back in high school chemistry class, I accidentally mixed a large quantity of hydrochloric acid and sulfur dioxide. Quite a reaction I got! I'm lucky to still have my eyesight. over brawn. Wait. The girl's still in the lab. Right. right. Sulfur dioxide. Be very careful. Don't get it on your skin. Don't breathe the fumes. I owe the IRS $10,000 in back taxes, and now I'm being threatened with wage garnishment. The state says that I owe them back taxes, and now they're going to seize my property.
our bats may bite, but we all know there's no rules in the game of fright. <laughs> Listen to my friend, give him your neck if you dare. Ah, here's his cousin standing tall. Pull his plug, and he might just fall. <laughs> We done broke three glasses this week already. You know mommy is a rich. Thank you, Bobby. Yes, son. I'll tell you a story. We'll have a seat in the front room to mommy finish. She been there and she'll tell you a story. Dinner time was a very special time for the Novak. 
himself a way of life for this poor family. One day, Can you stand up? Stand on a hot Did you say evening, James sure. and no yeah. brown yeah. to one another as they always fear a certain meal Thank God for this food, although we're poor, there's eight of us at the table, and there's only food for four. Monarch is our music dynasty.
safe. strange tale, wasn't it, Bobby? Did you enjoy it? Since you liked that story so much, Bobby, Mama will read you another one. She has time. Okay, Bobby. The name of this story is The Brothers. Once upon a time, there were two brothers. One was named Fred Johnson and the other one named Ted Johnson. Fred was the oldest of the two. Very successful businessman. While Ted, on the other hand, was working in a factory as a janitor, living from week to week, paycheck to paycheck. And on Fred's death, Ted went to the funeral home where his brother's body was being prepared for the wake of the funeral. Ted went there after closing time to do a very strange and horrible deed.
been all over the place, man. Still ain't here. What we gonna do? So look some more, buddy. That's all. Just want to be fine. I guess so. Shit. <laughs> Stop playing for I shove this flashlight down your throat, you asshole. Man, look at 
Psychic Master Mike, I've been expecting your call. Will I get approved for this new credit card? Will you? Cheating me all through my life, you son of a bitch, but no more, no more. Ever since you were a little kid, you've been fucking me around, taking what was mine. You would do little things to win father's approval. If I was to get a B in school, you would get an A. It's not that you really cared about school. To impress father over me. And then later on, you throw it up into my face. Nothing is sacred to you. 
son of a bitch that would have done one thing for me that would have satisfied the hatred I have of you. Or I would explain in detail to you before the poison had done its work and how I was going to get away with it. To have seen the look on your face right before you had died knowing that I had murdered you and I was going to get away with it. Oh, but that's all in the past now. I have something else planned for you, dear brother. <laughs> you know this shrine you have built for yourself, dear brother? <laughs> You'll never be buried in it. Only other obsession outside of getting the best of me, fucking up my life. A shrine you spent all that inheritance money on, which half should have been mine got the best of me there too, dear brother. <laughs> You're naked, brother. I can't bury you like that. <laughs> Let's see what I can find to bury you in. <laughs> Dear brother, 
you don't know, let's not play any games. I'll tell you, right here in this house, in the basement crawl place, <laughs>
Ooh, that was one of the strangest stories I've ever read. Ooh, these glasses are giving me a headache. Let me go change them. Be right back. Okay, Bobby. Mommy got her other glasses now. You ready for another story? All right, Mommy will tell you another story. Oh, God. Here comes Daryl. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Bobby, listen. Mommy wants you to go to your room. Be real quiet, okay? You know how Daryl is. Just go to your room, okay? Why is Roger happy? It's the little things Carvana does. See, Roger wants to sell his car, stat. Little things like getting a real offer in two minutes really make Roger happy. So does Carvana's customer advocate, Caitlin, picking up his car at promptly 10 a.m. Hi, are you Roger? Berglund, with the Honda Accord? Yes, I am. It's right over there. Will I be getting... And he loves that Caitlin pays him on the spot. Yep, Rog, it's the little things that drive you happy. We'll drive you happy at Carvana. Some people are born to What's this? It's a book. Where did you get it from? Daryl, don't need this shit from you today. What you mean you don't need this shit? I don't need this shit. Well, damn well, you've been sitting there all damn day reading this book to our dead son, and he's been dead three years, and I'm tired so of this shit. fucking what? So what do you mean, what? so fucking what, you crazy bitch? Damn, bitch! 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 Damn, bitch!
Bobby, Daddy isn't with us anymore. He forced my hand. He didn't understand how much Mommy loved you. Oh, Bobby, I know. I know you're going to miss Daddy. He's gone far, far away. But listen, Mommy brought the book. Would you like for Mommy to read you a story? Mommy, read you a story. Okay? Okay. Okay, Bobby. Do you have a story in mind? Is there any story you'd like for Mommy to read you this time?
Hello, ma'am. I'm Sergeant Thompson from the Sheriff's Department. Do you have some type of problem here? Can you step back from the door, please? We uh, received a call from this address, ma'am. Uh, it was a gentleman. Could that have been your husband? Hey, in the kitchen. Uh, let's go this way, please. I'll call it in. All right. Now, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can't be used against the law. I didn't mean for it to happen. I didn't yeah, mean for it to go that far. Hey. President, would you do a hey. questioning? If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed. What's going to happen to me? Questioning if you wish one. Do you understand each of these rights I've explained to you? Bobby. Having these in mind, do you wish to speak with us now? Bobby. Bobby, I want my son, Bobby. Is there someone else in the house, ma'am? Bobby, I can't leave Bobby here by... I can't leave him here by himself. She keeps saying something about somebody named Bobby. You know? Any idea? Yeah, it's a uh, deceased son. No. No. Well, what do you want us to do? Well, we'll just go ahead and cuff and put her in the car. Bobby is not okay. dead. He's not dead. Oh, no. God, I can't leave Bobby here by... I can't leave him here by himself. You gotta... You gotta let me go to the bathroom. You gotta let me go what to the think? bathroom. Check it out. Bye. I can't leave Bobby here by himself. That's all right. Now, we'll take care of him. I can't leave him here by himself. We'll take care of him. Just relax. You just got to let yeah. her come to the washroom. Make her some water. Bobby. 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 Bobby.
Now you can apply for and open a personal account at West Union Bank from anywhere online. Just like me now. Say sorry, I say. Is you, mommy? I missed you too, baby. Love you, mommy. You too. Do you tell me a story? Yes, mommy, I tell you a story. Go and dance it out, and mommy, go get the book. This story is the unsaved vision. Once upon a time, we were a family of three. And at the age of three, the son died in a tragic car accident. And the son, Bobby, and Mommy loved each other very, very much. And the son will come back and he will love for Mommy to read him stories. And Mommy will read him stories out of a book that he will make her hear. And the daddy, Daryl, didn't believe that Bobby was coming back. He come home one evening, and Mommy and Daryl got into a If somebody had never seen a cannibal film before, I would tell them to expect a mixture of so-called found footage and real footage. White people going into either the Amazon or Southeast Asia to investigate a primitive tribe, quite possibly looking for someone else. Uh, a lot of rape, a lot of violence, a lot of killing of animals, and most, if not all, of the white people will end up dead. È un filone molto particolare perché Innanzitutto è ambientato in, in luoghi esotici eh, come, come l'Amazzonia di Cannibal Holocaust, per esempio. La realtà di popoli primitivi che vivono ancora all'età della pietra, all'età della preistoria addirittura, i cui riti eh, sono appunto cannibalici. Mangiano i loro nemici, mangiano 
eh, i bianchi che osano penetrare nel loro territorio. Cannibal movies um, really took up where the Mondo movies left off. And the Mondo movies sort of presented third world people uh, and they juxtaposed their behaviors with those of people in more civilized communities. And the idea was, as indeed is paraphrased in uh, Cannibal Holocaust at the end, who are the real savages, who are the real cannibals? Um, and it was supposed to make you think, oh, well, these guys, uh, they have their place in the anthropological scheme of things and we're not so superior to them. But I think, to be honest, a lot of it was to make us laugh at them and be sick about them and to feel superior to them. Um, there's, a, there's a tension in Italian cinema between, on the one hand, arty, worthy movies, and on the other hand, the uh, B-movies, the profits of which often underwrote the arty movies for the same producers. Um, but there's also um, a tension between the cinema as spectacle and neorealism, and the cinema as spectacle, which became discredited because of the place it played in, in Mussolini's fascist scheme of things, was supplanted, but not completely, by neorealism, where it's saying, let's look at life as it is actually lived. Um, but in the cannibal movies, the Mondo movies followed by the cannibal movies, you get the, yeah, it's realism because this is what it's really like. And then, no, they're not really like that. It's, uh, it's cinema spectacle. No jungle revenge is complete without a little cannibalism for dessert. Make them die, slowly. know what kind of animal he was. They'd never seen a white man before. And he had never seen such brutality. You murderers! È italiano perché in realtà è stato inventato da Umberto Lenzi eh, con un film che si chiama Il paese del sesso selvaggio. A long series of bloodthirsty tortures had begun. E guarda, io fui chiamato dal produttore Rossi e Assonitis, che erano due buoni produttori, mi sottoposero questa sceneggiatura che era intitolata appunto The Mind from the Trip River che era, stata, eh, che era stata firmata da due sceneggiatori italiani anche bravi, elaborata diciamo, però il soggetto originale era di una, di una famosa scrittrice di, di romanzi erotici, una, una scrittrice francese di origini thailandesi che praticamente aveva scritto un soggetto basato su tutti i riti tribali di certe eh, zone eh, al confine fra la Thailandia e la Birmania. Lei, lei eh, aveva vissuto finché non era, si era trasferita a Parigi lì e quindi aveva dato quest'idea di fare un film non tanto sui cannibali quanto sui selvaggi fuori da ogni limite del, della, della civilizzazione. Eh, io ho preso questo, questo film, questo eh, questa sceneggiatura e vidi che c'era una scena anche di, di questo rito eh, cannibalico e sono andato in Thailandia e... Thailand, a country where two thirds of the jungle is still unexplored. Here death reigns. The Man from Deep River is quite fascinating because from a narrative perspective it really sets up every other cannibal film. It's like The main character is the generic white guy who goes into the jungle that everybody else in every subsequent film tries to chase. He's getting away from a criminal past, he's hurt some people, and you know he's seen alongside a lot of violence, both human on human and animal. And so I found it quite interesting because there he goes and, and he meets up with this primitive tribe and he's sort of adopted by this tribe, although he has to learn their ways. Um, It's almost like a very retro, horrific Dances with Wolves in its strange way. And, and he, in fact, he kind of turns, you know, he turns into a native. L'idea principale di questa scrittrice è stata poi elaborata da, da due scrittori italiani che hanno fatto dei riferimenti molto espliciti a un uomo chiamato Cavallo perché non potevano limitarsi a mostrare scene di tribali, di, di quelli che mangiano gli animali o che fanno la, 
l'estrazione del, del veleno da serpente cobra. Quindi hanno scritto una storia che somigliava molto a un uomo chiamato Cavallo. I love Thailand, I really did. I suppose I remember parts of the, the jungle and the, um, I don't know, the, the hard conditions in which I had to work with Ivan, Ivan Rasimov. girato il film in, mil, in mezzo a mille difficoltà perché abbiamo girato in posti molto molto lontani dalla, dalla città eh, diciamo al limite della giungla proprio dalla parte della Birmania dove, dove esiste il famoso ponte sul fiume Quei infatti il film comincia con l'attore Ivan Rassimo che con un treno se ne sta dire e il treno quello è, è quello che va sul ponte sul fiume Quei perché il, il film fu girato a Sri Lanka dove ricostruirono, ma la verità il ponte stava lì e io l'ho ripreso. Early morning I used to have to walk down to the makeup tent which was quite a long way away and I'd be petrified because I'm thinking tigers, you know, leopards, that sort of thing and I used to run as fast as I could to the makeup bungalow <laughs> because I was petrified. A lot. I mean, I had done nudes before, but I must admit that was um, really an awful lot of nudity, but not, not as much as compared to Last Cannibal World, which was practically the whole film was nude. In Man from Deep River, at least I'm partly dressed some of the time. <laughs> Allora il signor Ruggero Deodato, mio caro amico, va dicendo che l'ha inventato lui il genere, che io ho copiato lui perché ha fatto Ultimo Mondo Cannibale e Cannibal Holocaust. Ma la verità è che se lui ha fatto questi film lo deve a me, il merito è mio, perché dopo aver girato The Man from the Deep River, che col titolo Mondo Cannibale, ho già detto prima, ebbe successo in Germania enorme, il produttore firmò un altro accordo con la Germania che partecipava all'80% in un altro film di Cannibali diretto da Umberto Lenzi, interpretato da Mimi Lei e da Ivan Rassimov. Firmò questo contratto, poi venne a casa a cena da me e mi disse Umberto allora facciamo un altro film come quello che abbiamo fatto l'anno scorso, sai forse in Germania lo vendiamo. Io gli dissi guarda io so che il film ha avuto un successo enorme dappertutto, per cui tu mi paghi esattamente il doppio dell'altro film. E lui mi disse, ah no, è troppo, non posso, eccetera. Io gli disse, allora ti saluto, perché avevo un contratto con la Dania Film e feci poi Milano Odia, mi sembra un film. Quindi non è che... che però lui, per non rompere il contratto con i tedeschi, dovette... Cambiò il regista perché disse, io ero ammalato, cioè, però dovette lasciare Mimi Lei e Ivan Rassimov che però a, a, a Rassimo va una piccola parte e poi prese un altro attore, però i, i loro due rimasero per questo contratto. Quindi lui si ha fatto Mondo Cannibale, il primo film di Cannibale che ha fatto, lo deve a me, che ho rinunciato io e l'ha fatto lui. Ma se io lo accettavo di fare, come era scritto in questo contratto, forse lui i film di Cannibale non l'avrebbe fatti. Il progenitore del, del cannibalico penso, penso di essere stato io, perché ho visto, cioè non ho visto il film del sesso selvaggio di, di Umberto Lenzi. Go on, George, go in closer to Deodato. Mentre il mio film, Ultimo Mondo Cannibale, è stato proprio originato, cioè è stato scritto per fare vedere i cannibali, il mondo dei cannibali, tant'è vero che io l'ho studiato su dei libri e poi mi sono molto documentato con, con la rivista National Geographic e quindi ho seguito tutta la, la ritualità del, del cannibalismo. Non credo che nel film di Lenzi ci sia, ci sia stato questo. Forse Lenzi dopo Ultimo Mondo Cannibale ha fatto quel film che eh, Cannibal Ferox penso, ma 
non l'aveva fatto prima. Prima aveva fatto questo film che era un po' un'imitazione dell'uomo chiamato cavallo. It seems impossible that today there are still primitive tribes who have never seen a white man. Tribes still living in the Stone Age. Last Cannibal World is quite interesting. It starts off as almost a buddy movie. You know, two guys going into the jungle to figure what they can get out of it. And then the one guy, it, it's, it's not even that these people are primitive, they're beyond primitive. They're not, they're almost Neanderthals living in the caves, locking the one guy up, pissing on him at points. You know, he's no Ivan Razumov. He's not going to be welcomed into the tribe. Last Cannibal World. Um, to me, it was really fun. It was like the Marx Brothers. It's, uh, it was so preposterous. I mean, all the plot, what, what the choices it was making, and um, the cannibal tribe who was like a, a, a gay tribe in, in San Francisco. I don't know. It's, uh, um, everybody was very concerned about his penis. So, 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 it was a lot. Uh, i found this was stupid and but but funny. Ultimo mondo io non ho mai visto il film di 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 l'ultimo mondo cannibale fu un film girato più o meno anche lui in Malesia. Sì, credo anche prima del mio. Però in realtà la mia storia anche se aveva dei punti di contatto perché anche il suo film credo che avesse l'intenzione di fare uno spettacolo ovviamente di di violenza e di di avventura. Però il mio forse fu girato in modo, cioè utilizzando anche parti della storia non legate semplicemente al cannibalismo, alle cose che lui raccontava. Most of the time I was topless or nude or whatever, and it was between um, the scenes. And I just sat on, on the ground because I had my little wrap around and I just sat down because there wasn't a chair to sit on, we just sat wherever we could. And I just felt this little wriggling under my left backside. And I thought, what on earth? So I lifted my backside off the thing and had a look, and there was this snake. And I don't know if you've ever sat on the floor and then tried to get up. It takes a little doing, doesn't it? I was up on my two feet like, like when you do water skiing, you know how you go up on your skis? I was like that, up on my feet, shouting, snake, snake, because I was petrified. And everyone looked at me like as if I'd gone mad. It's like, now, now what's wrong, you know? Like as if I was acting like some sort of Madonna, you know? And uh, I was going, snake, snake. Anyway, when someone saw it slithering away, they, they were going, oh, serpente. And while filming, we've lived a real adventure ourselves in a world where cannibalism still exists. Didn't like being killed at all, no. There's this horrible scene where I had my sort of head in a sort of box, because it's like my body in before it's cut up, and they were setting up the scene. I had this terrible cold, and I was with my head under this box, because it looked like as if my neck had been chopped off. And I was there for ages, or what seemed like for ages, with them setting up the scene. And I sneezed, and of course all my arms and things were buried, and you know, because they were supposed to have been chopped off. And there was nothing I could do, because I'd sneezed, and then somebody came and wiped my nose for me <laughs> while they were setting up, which I was so grateful for, because I was like this with all the... <laughs> So sweetly, one of the crew came with a tissue and wiped my nose for me. Yeah, I, I didn't enjoy that scene too much because um, it was really uncomfortable. Yeah. I want, I want to eat. The treatment of women is, is pretty awful. I mean, these they're just objects. I mean, a couple of the films, you know, the Faye character in Cannibal Holocaust or the woman in Car Cannibal Ferox, who manages to survive, they're not so bad. But, you know, these are old horror films, and horror films on the whole tend to be sexist, if not misogynist, towards women in general. It's kind of par for the course. I mean, I've just said to Ruggiero, just to be a bit careful, that, um, you know, I didn't want everyone seeing what I 
had eaten for breakfast as long as he and he said oh no no you know I will be very careful and uh, I you know with Maximo it was quite good because he was so kind he was such a nice person you know and because it was embarrassing for him as well you know and I don't know because I think the scene is cut but when we did it you know it was quite like, I don't know, there was the long grass, so it wasn't so bad. I mean, the rape in all the cannibal films is quite disturbing, but it was the most disturbing in this because they tried to pass it off as somehow good. He, you know, he rapes the woman and then later on she brings him food. It's somehow okay. He's the complete opposite in a way of the character for Man from Deep River because, but then again, he also sets up the vile white person who is actually just as bad as the primitive, which is a theme that comes out in some of the later ones. The misogyny in these films is clearly problematic. If one is at all concerned about issues of gender and sexual uh, equality, um, racial and, and ethnic cultural equality, one should not be watching Italian genre films. A case of cannibalism. Truly incredible. It could be the scoop of the century. Tell me, whatever happened to the nurse now? I, I would include Emmanuel in The Last Cannibals, other than just, you know, because the title uses the C word. Um, because the functioning of the Laura Gemser character in, in the film, as sort of the plucky reporter um, who goes off on assignment, the, as, as typical within the, the Black Emmanuel films, um, is the reason to put the characters into the back of beyond. And you need some excuse to get them there, whether it's the lost documentary or, or trying to prove something, you know, the, the plane crashes, these kinds of things. And so that device works very well within the genre. Emmanuel and the Last Cannibals, people tend to be dismissive of that because they think it's just, um, oh, D'Amato, he just used the nascent uh, emerging cannibal genre and he tied it onto a sexual narrative. but. Um, there was always this connection between the Mondo movies and the Cannibal movies anyway. And D'Amato's Emmanuel, played by Laura Gemza, is a lady traveling the world, having sex with lots of people, observing sexual behavior in different parts of the world. So it's very, um, you know, it's a natural progression. I think it's a more important p film than people give it credit for. Uh, what it does is it's the first film to move the narrative from Southeast Asia to South America. However, although there's a phony credit at the end of Emmanuel and the Last Cannibals, if you look at it, you'll see that they never got beyond an Italian park, but at least they're saying we're in uh, South America. The Last Cannibals, it could be a tremendous scoop. In Emmanuel and the Last Cannibals, we also see um, Gabriele Tinti as the professor shows um, Laura Gemza in, in, in part of his uh, seduction uh, re repertoire really he shows her this found footage of cannibalism and castration and she thinks this is just great and she sleeps with him but um, I think that is uh, perhaps somebody could uh, contradict me on this but I think that's the first appearance of the film within a film stuff within a cannibal movie which obviously was used so devastatingly by Ruggiero Diodato in Cannibal Holocaust a few years later. I would probably, if I were dividing up you know, my DVD shelves, would probably put Emmanuel and the Last Cannibals with the cannibals as opposed to the Black Emmanuel films. I, I think it has much more in keeping with that particular tradition than, than say, the, uh, the soft erotica of D'Amato. The first cannibal movie I saw would have been uh, Prisoners of the Cannibal God, which c came out theatrically. And about a couple of weeks later, the same cinema showed um, Island of the Mutations, another Sergio Martino film, which probably is what put him on my map and made me look out for his, his films. And I remember thinking that actually... Island of Mutations was more fun than Prisoner of the Cannibal God, which was kind of a hoot. I mean, um, even in its 
BBFC sanctioned form. Um, yeah, it wasn't a terribly serious film. It was a throwback to 1930s type jungle adventures. <laughs> La speculazione su certi elementi, che proprio nel mio film non fu solo quella. Io in realtà il racconto che facevo è un racconto anche di spettacolo, di sentimenti, di avventura, del fascino dell'ignoto, del, di un mondo ancora non conosciuto. Ovviamente all'interno di questi meccanismi certo c'era anche la, la violenza di, di culture molto tribali, molto legate al, al sangue al, e all'uso di, di, di un atteggiamento molto aggressivo nei confronti dell'uno con l'altro, più animalesco, diciamo, tutto qua. Prisoner of the Cannibal Gods is a little weird because it's got the more major actors, Ursula Andress and Stacey Keach, uh, major, they're not major actors, but they're certainly known to Western audiences. And, but those films came in a time when a lot of those sort of, you know, second or third tour actors were going to other countries and doing films like this. Um, and I think it tried to extend the plot a little bit, make it a little bit more in depth, make it a little more interesting. So, you know, it tries to have sort of a more financial intrigue, people looking out for gold, you know, it tries to extend the plot to make it not just about the cannibals, I guess trying to appeal to a wider American audience or as wider as you can get with this kind of film. Mountain of the Cannibal God. He doesn't have a, a signature style that, oh, that's a Martino film. He immerses himself so fully into the genre he's working at to try to make, you know, uh, I don't, I'm not comfortable with these words, but, but a perfect genre film. It, it seems to be his goal. I've got a great deal of respect for that. And so what I see in Mountain of the Cannibal God is him trying to make the best cannibal film, you know, given all, all, all of the resources. So he's just immersed himself to make this kind of film. So there's a, a purity of genre that, that, that uh, exists within that film. Um, and there's, there's the, the rather not so subtle humor um, that, that he, he plays with, you know, so how far can he push this? Because that's what the genre is about, about how far you can push this. I think, I'm not sure if Diodato or Lenzi actually wins that, that particular crown. The island is covered by a very dense jungle which surrounds and protects the sacred mountain of Ra Rami. Sacred because the natives believe that the mountain is cursed. Quindi oggi probabilmente uno può inorridire a vedere una cosa del genere, però in quegli anni lì lo era, lo era abbastanza normale. Io molto coinvolto dalle riprese del film in Sri Lanka e anche il film lo abbiamo girato per una parte in Sri Lanka o per una parte in Malesia. La parte dello Sri Lanka è stata sicuramente una parte, una parte dove le scene che abbiamo realizzato, anche perché l'ambiente dello Sri Lanka, la gente dello Sri Lanka è molto più disponibile nei confronti della, di una, in quegli anni perlomeno, era molto più disponibile nei confronti del, 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 di, di aiutare alle riprese. Per cui le riprese che abbiamo fatto in Sri Lanka le ricordo con molto più piacere. In, in, le riprese che ho fatto in Malesia, non, so, non per un problema della Malesia, ma perché erano molto più difficoltose, in quanto c'erano escursioni termiche molto violente, faceva molto caldo, l'umidità era moltissima e poi per girare nella, nelle cave dove ho girato ovviamente non era facile, bisogna essere giovani per fare quel film. Infatti la prima cosa che dico oh, per fare il regista sì ci vuole talento ma ci vuole anche il fisico. <ride> La violenza in realtà di, di alcune di quelle cose che sono successe nel film sinceramente sono state causa, casuali. Nello specifico la scena di cui molti mi hanno rimproverato del serpente che, che uccide il manchi è una scena che non era nelle intenzioni di realizzarla in quei termini però poi la, 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 la situazione ci è sfuggita di mano e ovviamente è stato impossibile recuperare dalle, dalle spire del... del, del del, 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 del pitone e eh, la bestiolina. Certamente a distanza di anni mi, in realtà in quel momento fu una scena molto efficace, quindi, però non, voglio, non ho voluto speculare io personalmente, la speculazione è venuta dall'incidente che è avvenuto. Sicuramente in quegli anni lì, se oggi dovessi rifare quel film, non farei mai una cosa del genere, anche perché 
probabilmente le assicurazioni di che non c'era tanto rischio per gli animali, per l'animale che poteva forse ritornare a essere libero da, dal, dal, dal serpente, sotto certi aspetti dai tecnici che avevano in mano questi animali era assicurata, però parliamo di un film girato più di 30 anni fa, quasi 35, la stessa differenza che c'era probabilmente dal momento che io ho girato quel film e dagli anni prima della guerra ancora in cui c'era ancora il cinema muto, quindi praticamente anche la cultura e la morale di quegli anni, soprattutto in, in, in paesi anche come l'Italia rispetto al mondo anglosassone, non era così, non aveva ancora tanto preso il problema. Oggi, qui grazie a Dio, questi problemi sono, sono apprezzati, sono valutati bene anche nei nostri paesi e quindi potenzialmente se oggi dovessi fare un film diciamo, di questo tipo di spettacolo non abuserei mai di questo tipo di immagini che ovviamente credo che siano state abbastanza crudeli, però non più di tanto di, qua di quanto ho visto in tanti altri film. Il successo di Cannibal Gold of the God in Italia fu abbastanza grande, fu soprattutto ricordo come, come campione d'incasso in Olanda, dove mi ricordo era uscito un film di 007 e nello stesso momento eh, il mio film era secondo se non superiore all'incasso del film di 007, non mi ricordo quale fosse, quindi evidentemente anche nei paesi diciamo nordici dell'Europa il film ebbe un impatto abbastanza importante che mi sorprese. Infatti il film, per chi comprò il film nel mondo intero o per quei paesi, fu un grande affare perché costò delle cifre tutto sommato eh, modeste, però di, ha dato dei grandi rendimenti. Ricordo che quando conobbi il produttore che, che acquistò i diritti quasi mi accarezzava perché il film aveva avuto tanti, tanto successo. Si puntava molto alla violenza, certamente è un, è un elemento che, che porta pubblico al cinema, è una speculazione. E certamente diciamo, in questo momento forse non, 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 io non la, non, la, non la percorrerei. As Sergio Martino's Mountain of the Cannibal God, a.k.a. Prisoner of the Cannibal God, made in Sri Lanka, released in Southeast Asia, as witnessed here, um, I wonder what they thought of being told that they were basically cannibals and they needed a strapping western lass like this. She's Swiss, isn't she? Um, Ursula Andress to rule over them. Savage Terror, a.k.a. Primateeth, was a, um, an Indonesian film, I believe, and uh, I, I won't attempt to, um, to pronounce the director's name here. Perhaps a caption will flash up at this point. But um, that... Uh, I'm always reminded of a film that Dennis Hopper made in 1971 called The Last Movie where he's part of a film crew and he sort of drops out and he stays in this uh, third world locale but the people that they leave behind take up the discarded film equipment and start making a movie and uh, Dennis fares terribly badly in all of this and it's a very interesting argument about uh, uh, cinema and meta cinema, but I'd like to think possibly that the movie that the guys made turned out to be um, Savage Terror, the Indonesian movie, um, which I don't know if they ever cleared the rights to use the Kraftwerk music in that either, which is really, really bizarre. And an interesting film, but again, troubling, as are, as are so many of the movies in this genre. Ma io credo che il vero inizio dei film cannibali sia stato Cannibal Holocaust perché è stato il, il successo strepitoso di questo film, non in Italia perché in Italia è stato sequestrato, è stato bloccato, è stato distribuito anni dopo quindi ormai il film commercialmente era morto, ma all'estero è stato un successo di proporzioni colossali. stile vero è arrivato sui cannibali perché lì ho avuto la possibilità di studiare l'argomento, studiare e quindi trovare la, il film naturale che si adatta a me stesso, insomma è rossellignano perché sono andato a trovare tutte quante le cose realistiche del cannibalismo. 
l'ho studiato molto, ho studiato il cannibalismo, mi sono documentato, quindi è stato, forse ci ho messo talmente tutto la mia, la mia, il mio desiderio di fare una cosa fatta bene che poi mi ha portato fortuna perché mi ha portato a ampliare in un certo modo il cannibalismo, anche se Cannibal Holocaust non è un film sul cannibalismo, è un film su, su un altro tipo di genere, ma poi c'è il cannibalismo. Oh, good Lord! It's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's horrible. I can't understand the reason for such cruelty. Un film nel film, ossia girato come se fosse una storia vera. Questi fotoreporter criminali, perché alla fine uccidono, violentano, distruggono villaggi degli indios per fare dei servizi scoop per, il, per, il loro, per, per le loro emittenti. Um, in realtà girano in prima persona con la telecamera quindi ci cioè, sono queste immagini anche virate, anche graffiate, sporche che poi in realtà è lo stesso meccanismo narrativo che hanno ripreso in seguito Blair Witch Project, Rec e tanti altri film I'm amazed that it took until, really until Blair Witch Project for that to resurge in horror films And really, and especially considering how found footage is done so badly today, over and over again, it's amazing how effective it is. Even if you're somebody who has now, today in 2014, seen so many found footage, you could, if you've never seen Cannibal Holocaust, you could go to it today and be incredibly disturbed by it because it feels much more natural. It doesn't feel forced. The actors are all really good. They, I think, especially because back then it wasn't used in that way, so there's a much greater naturalism among the actors. It's far more effective than any found footage movie you would see today. Che è un bel film, io l'ho visto, è un bel film perché è violento, ci sono le uccisioni degli animali, io, io non sono d'accordo sull'uccisione degli animali, però voglio dire, c'è e comunque il contenuto del film va oltre l'uccisione di animali, cioè il film secondo me ha una morale, è un film etico, è un film che condanna certe cose in maniera molto netta, molto chiara e quindi è un film anche con un valore e, e poi è molto divertente, sono molto piacevole da vedere. Quando ho girato Cannibal Holocaust ho detto io voglio fare un film che gli americani non possono fare perché gli americani si devono organizzare per fare un film, Molto, eh, devono avere i mezzi, devono avere le location, devono avere gli alberghi five star, devono avere tutto questo e io invece sono andato nei posti dove è impossibile arrivarci. We flew to Leticia, we were, all I looked out the window I saw was jungle. There's no road to Leticia, you can't get there by road, you can only get there by boat or by airplane. You know, it was dangerous, there were snakes. I used to wear high boots, because you're supposed to wear high boots with the snakes, because if they bite you when you're walking, they'll get hold of the leather instead of your foot. But I realized them with a bunch of crazy Italians who probably, they didn't have an emergency kit, they didn't have snake repellent, they didn't have, I mean, if I got bitten, I was going to die. I think that, that the God, the Almighty, must have been really very upset when he created the Amazonas. I mean, it's, it's not a place for, for the human being to stay. It's the terrible heat, uh, the mosquitoes, all the, um, the, the other snakes, and w w whatever hellish thing uh, uh, about nature you can imagine is there. Even dolphins are, are bad winds. Uh, we met a red dolphin and we were explained that the red dolphin is not at all like dolphins which are so nice and said they no no they they want to <laughs> to reverse boats and eat people so um <laughs> and uh, no it wasn't a pleasant staying it was uh, terrible the hotel was terrible the food was terrible and even very scarce and uh and then to it was terrible to watch at, at the conditions of 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 the natives there which is really spoiled and living in um, i mean w w what the white man did to those people is um abominable watch it alan i'm shooting 
it certainly is one of the most disturbing films that I have ever seen, even 30 years on. Um, but it quite clearly shows the white people as bad. It quite clearly shows how, you know, ethnographic research can go wrong, even with the character of Monroe, who's going in there to retrieve the films and he's supposedly the good guy. The bad guy, Yates and his documentary crew, obviously come off as completely horrible, and it does, and I don't know if this was the intention, but it shows the bad side of Westerners going into places where they have no business, trying to document and wreaking havoc. It, it actually makes a very strong point of how Western culture invades in ways that it shouldn't, and we shouldn't always assume that everybody has good intentions. On a personal level, I don't think the animal cruelty can be justified in any extent. But what it does do is certainly provide visceral reaction. I'm sure any audience member like myself would feel quite nauseated watching the killing of animals, knowing that it's real. You know, not necessarily people first watching it would know that it was real. But then again, how could you not see that it's real? Your cheesy burger bites recipe is the grand prize winner! What? <laughs> oh. As a restaurateur and lover of the culinary arts, I am thrilled to be a part of this amazing event. <laughs> uh, uh, please join me! Oh! at the awards ceremony featuring a concert by my band, Rock On, Johnny Depp. <gasps> Asterix, airfare not included.
Ladies, this is Principal Gross Fettig. I simply cannot allow these subpar lunches to continue. What a load of donkey shit! Sir, sir, we are we are doing our best. We're, we're giving a hundred percent, but we can't be at the top of our game if our parts ain't fresh. Ladies, a real chef can create a masterpiece from what's at hand. Bottom line, you're not working up to Melvin High potential. If lunch doesn't improve tomorrow, for surprise Friday, I have no choice but to replace you with vending machines. I hope you understand, lunch ladies. We're chefs, not lunch ladies. Fuck you, Melvin High! Johnny wants us! We are out of here! Red, 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 honey, we cannot lose our jobs. Buy that airfare and get to the concert. Johnny's concert. Asterisk? Airfare. Not included. God damn it! Lady Johnny Jizz all over it. Uh, 
WWJD. <laughs> what would Johnny do? Blood than a raccoon. Please visit the Jostens rep in room 107. And remember, cash only. Whoever stole that rug that was in front of Miss Crispin's desk, please return it. It really tied the room together. And lastly, for lunch today, it's Surprise Friday. I don't know. Maybe we should have tasted it first. I mean, what if... What? What? You're driving me crazy. and fruit that ripened in far distant plains where warmer far the sunbeams shoot where a more bounteous nature reigns her gift
Whatever happens, we stick together, right? Sisters forever, Johnny forever, way, way! Those are the most beautiful pies I have ever seen. Order! Order! For the Today, you not only met Melvin High Potential, you exceeded it. <laughs> I don't know what you lunch ladies did differently today, but keep it up. Yes, sir!